Can you guess what this is? Oh, try not to make so much mess. Wow, look at that. Perfect. You are definitely not going to eat this stuff. Hello, I'm Maddie and welcome to my kitchen. Now, it might look as if we're about to do some baking, but with this as our main ingredient, I've got something else in mind. I'm going to show you how we can make our very own recycled paper. But first, let's go back a bit to where our main ingredient started out its life. Here, as a tree. Did you know around 93% of the world's paper comes from trees? However, cutting down lots of trees can disturb wildlife, forcing animals from their homes. Trees also help humans breathe by releasing oxygen and taking carbon dioxide out of the air, so we need to protect them as much as we can. That being said, most books do start their lives as trees. Sustainable wood is brilliant for making perfect paper for books. It's called sustainable wood because the forests are managed responsibly, meaning that when trees are chopped down, new ones will be replanted in their place. But it's hard to imagine that this book started out as a tree, isn't it? Trees are made up of stringy, hair-like threads called plant fibres, and a special process will mash them up and flatten them out so that this becomes this. But if we're doing arts and crafts or scribbling notes, we don't need perfect, smooth paper like this, do we? We can just reuse old scraps of paper and recycle them. Let me show you how. But uh, first, we need to go back to the kitchen. I'm going to follow the instructions in my book, Stuff. The whole book is packed with eco stories about the way things are made all over the world. But at the back, you'll find a couple of stuff to make and do pages where there are lots of ideas for things you can make at home using recycled and easy to find materials. And there we go. Craft your own recycled paper. It says we're going to need some water, a bowl, a tea towel, a rolling pin and some recycled paper. You could also use cardboard if you wanted to. A couple of extra things that aren't essential but you might want to use include a sieve, uh, a potato masher, or if you're really serious, a blender. If you are using a blender though, you're going to want to ask a grown-up for help. Let's start by picking our material. I want to make a brightly coloured paper. So let's tear this egg carton and old blue envelope into tiny pieces and put them in the bowl. The smaller the pieces, the better, because it will save you a bit of time later on. This might take a while, so let's speed things up a bit. And now for the envelope. There we go, all finished. When we add water to our scraps of paper, we're going to make a nice papery porridge. And this is the fun bit because it's where things get messy. Here we go. Yes. And then you just get your fingers in and start to break up all of those scraps of paper. This will take different amounts of time depending on how thick your paper or cardboard is. Oh, hang on, take a look at this. If I start to pull this scrap of paper apart, can you see? all of those little strands. Can you see those? Those are the plant fibres that started off as wood. As much fun as this is, I'm going to speed things up a little bit by putting the paper porridge into the blender to help it get really mushy. All right, let's see if I can do this. Oh, try not to make so much mess. Oh. <laughs> that sounded horrible. Okay. Lid on. Ready? Perfect! Look at that! Oh, that is what we're looking for. Paper mush. Ugh. To help separate the paper mush from some of the water, I'm going to run it through a sieve into another bowl. Ugh. Now most of the water has drained through, we've been left with this. It's called pulp. Remember that word, pulp is quite important in the paper making world, but it's basically this, a wet lump of mushy fibres. And this is what we're going to use to make our own recycled paper. So I'm going to move things to the side now, and we're going to lay out our tea towel just like this. 
and spread the pulp over the tea towel in the shape that we want our paper to be. It might not look very pretty now, but I promise you later on it is going to look like paper. To help spread it out so we can make the paper thinner, that's where we use our rolling pin. Here we go. Wow! As I use the rolling pin, I'm flattening out the pulp but also squeezing out any excess water. If the rolling pin has made any holes, you might want to use your fingers to squash any bits of pulp back together again to close those gaps up. It's a little bit like rolling out cookie dough, only you are definitely not going to eat this stuff. And there we go, done, simple as that. All we need to do now is let it dry. It's sunny today, so I'm going to put mine outside in the garden, but you could put yours in any warm dry spot around the house. Wood isn't the only thing we can use to make paper. We can use lots of different things like banana leaves and coconut and even this. Can you guess what this is? That's right, this, this is poo, real life elephant poo. And I know what you're thinking, Maddie, doesn't it smell? Well, <coughs> um, not really. It's been washed and cleaned, but also elephants mostly eat plants, so their poo isn't very smelly. But it does mean that their poo is packed with lots of fibre. Look at all of these little fibres. And that's because fibre comes from plants and elephants eat a lot of them. I oh know, let's try something. I've got three different types of paper here coconut paper, banana leaf paper, and elephant poo paper. I want us to get a really good look at the fibre inside the paper, so we're going to use a microscope camera, starting with the coconut paper. Here we go. Whoa, look at that. Can you see all of the little woody strings? Those are the fibres. And they started out life on the outside of a coconut. You know, all the little hairy bits, the coconut husk. That's what these ones were. And they've been turned into paper. All right, let's look at the next one. This is the banana leaf paper. And you can see the fiber is much smaller. It's been really mashed up to make the paper, but we can just see it. So that started out as a banana leaf. And actually it's the fibers that give the leaf, the plant, its shape and its structure. But do you know what animal loves to eat banana leaves? You guessed it, an elephant. So if elephant poo paper is made from the plant fiber that an elephant eats, it's possible that elephant poo paper is also made up of banana leaf fiber. Let's take a look. Wow, look at that. This one has been left really chunky so we can properly see it. But there you go, that is a bit of elephant poo. This started out as a plant that got eaten by a hungry elephant. It traveled through the elephant's digestive system and then got pooped out, looking pretty similar to the way it went in before someone came along, picked it up, gave it a wash and turned it into paper. <laughs> My book Stuff explores this really cool journey. So if you wanna find out how this turns into this and become an elephant poo poo paper pro, then you could take a look. Or you could always watch the video we made in Thailand at the Elephant Poo Poo Paper Factory. All of the information is in the description box below. Ta-da! After a few hours in the sun, the paper is finally dry. All I need to do is peel it off, and there we go. A brand new piece of paper ready to be used again. If you make your own, why don't you get creative? You could use multicolored scraps of paper. Uh, you could even use a little bit of food dye if you wanted to. See what you can come up with. And if you want to find out how paper can be made from elephant poo, then you can read the story in my book or watch the video on YouTube. All the information is in the description box below. As always, stay curious and I'll see you very soon. Bye. I just need a pen. Stay curious. Thank <laughs> you.